This is a narrated version of Chapter 17, Inferring Offender Characteristics. Inferring Offender Characteristics. Behavioral evidence analysis seeks to examine the behavior and patterns in a particular offense and then make specific inferences about offender characteristics that are evident directly from the crime-related behavior. The purpose is to provide insight into criminal behavior and to define or refine the suspect pool in a criminal investigation. It is not a tool suited for the task of individuating offenders. The homology debacle. Two theories accepted by using predictive methods of criminal profiling are behavioral consistency and the homology assumption. The behavioral consistency theory suggests that the same criminal will behave in a relatively the same way across offenses. The homology assumption provides that different criminal, criminals who commit similar acts will have similar traits or characteristics. Issues, generalizations, don't work in real cases. Criminal profiling and criminal identity. Forensic identification is a general term that refers to the method used to classify or individuate items of evidence for court purposes. An item is identified when it can be placed into a class of items with similar characteristics. An item can only be individualized if it has some unique feature or property that distinguishes it from all other items in the universe. Personal identification refers to establishing the precise identity of individuals, typically witnesses, victims, and offenders. Forensic methods that can be used to individualize a particular person include fingerprint analysis and DNA analysis. Behavioral evidence should not be used to individualize a particular person in relation to a particular crime. Criminal profiling methods may be used to suggest the type of person most likely to have committed the offense, but not to accuse a specific person. Deducing offender characteristics. With respect to criminal investigation, characteristics that have proven to be investigatively relevant include the following. Evidence of criminal skill. Offenders who have committed a particular crime more than once may become more skillful as its com at its commission. Their skill may be thought of as a function of their planning and precautionary acts. Knowledge of the victim. An offender's choices may provide insight into the offender's relationship with the victim. The first question should be whether the offender is a stranger. If the answer is no, then strangers must be included in the suspect pool. If the particular answer is yes, then the question is what particular kind of knowledge about the victim was required and who would have had it. Knowledge of the crime scene. An offender's choices may give us insight into the offender's relationship with the crime scene involved. This can include knowledge of certain geographical areas, neighborhood, residences, buildings, and places of work. Knowledge of a crime scene suggests knowledge of a victim if the scene is strongly associated with that victim. Knowledge of methods and materials. Criminals use what is familiar to them. Their choices of methods and materials tend to reflect the familiarity evidencing their skills and aptitudes or lack thereof. This familiarity may be common to many, such as driving a stick shift vehicle, or may be particular, such as the ability to fly a helicopter. Problem characteristics. Problem characteristics include age, sex, and intelligence. Age and sex should not be inferred without conclusive physical evidence. Intelligence should be left out of an assessment altogether in favor of skill. The written profile. To best determine and document which characteristics are evident, the profile must be a written document. A written criminal profile is less likely to be misinterpreted and misrepresented. Information can be more easily referenced. Reducing one's reasoning to a written formal report is useful in establishing the logic involved in the process of forming particular conclusions. A written criminal pro profile represents the methods and conclusions of a criminal profiler in any given case. Criminal profiling and da Daubert. Criminal, profiles, criminal profilers are often asked to give testimony in court to help address forensic if issues. The Daubert standard of admissibility is one way to assist with determining whether or not the testimony of a particular method of profiling should be admissible. Though criminal profiling is not a science, it can be scientific with respect to its approach and it may be subject to Daubert criteria, which includes testability and falsification, peer reviews, error rates, and general acceptance. An argument can be made that overall utility of Daubert in lacking a part from the criteria that relate to hypothesis testing and falsification. This ends this narrated version of this PowerPoint presentation.